in these war zones as uh, producing video and stories that are as much about them in the war zone, Waldo Rivera and Toro Vera, Toro Bora, whatever. Um, and what's it really like? Is there a difference between those types and real reporters where you go? So you guys can all tackle this, but Michelle, I'll start with you because Michelle's new book is exactly about a decade of covering this stuff. <laughs> well, Carol off of CBC has asked that question. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, getting these people to talk, these three, in print, like in their public role, about their, themselves is very, very difficult. So thank you, Carol. <laughs> it, it's a terrific question, and not a, not, not a planted question, but uh, Carol and I... Um, work with an organization called uh, Canadian Journalists for Free Expression and a lot of what we do there is honoring local journalists in um, the regions and they are really the ones that feel the, face the danger. Um, it might be unfair to say but I think there is a divide in what you're talking about between television journalism and print journalism. You tend to see that more with, with anchors and the vests and the sort of sexy journalism about people being in danger's way. Um, you know, I think the golden rule of journalism is you report the story, you don't become part of it. Um, that's what we try and do. Now, so I'm not a total hypocrite, the book I've just written is <laughs> called Reporting from Terrorism's Grey Zone, um, and it is about 10 years of reporting on terrorism. But I will tell you, it was with great reluctance that I brought myself into it at all. Um, unfortunately, I was sort of the thread that goes through that. But I think you have to be careful not to do that in journalism, and I think there is a temptation sometimes. Carol. <laughs> I must say, if it wasn't somebody, I wouldn't have asked this question, and I felt as if I had to be in my These people don't do it. <laughs> I would just add that. I mean, I, I think it's, a, it's an excellent question and, and because I do think there is a tendency towards that. Um, you know, and, and I think it's very unfortunate. I think that whenever we're out there, we have to keep in mind that uh, it's the people that are, are the ones that are important. They're the ones risking their lives. They're the ones out on the streets. They're the ones demanding change. And it's, it's, we have to try to understand why they're doing that. And, uh, and the only way to do that is to talk to them and make them front and center in our reporting. But uh, uh, there is a tendency now that people, uh, journalists, write about themselves in these situations, and I think it's really unfortunate. I remember this one moment in Tarot Square. I ran into this, I think he was 17 or 18, and the night before, people had, uh, Mubarak's thugs, or somebody had shot snipers. The snipers were killing people in the square all night. You could hear the gunfire from the safety of our hotel room. It was really unnerving. You wake up in the morning, you don't know what might have happened in the square. I meet him, he's got bandages all over his head. He watched this other young man die right in front of him the night before. He had been shot straight in the head. And he could have retreated and instead he stood there. He stood there and, and fought to keep the square intact. And so you hear stories like that, and you become incredibly unimportant. You know, these people are spilling blood for ideals that they believe in, for their own freedom. They're fighting for values that are universal to all of us. Like, it just it doesn't really matter what happens to you as a journalist. It doesn't matter if you're having an uncomfortable day or if somebody's rough with you. You know, you look at these people and you can't help but be incredibly inspired by them. 